Hello there and welcome, I'm Mary Grave and today we are building a small gothic revival cottage. This is a part of my Instagram series Tiny History in which I recreate the most popular architecture styles in cozy, under 100 tile big homes for your sims and tell you something about its most prominent features as well as about the history. So let's build! The gothic revival architecture had its peak in the middle of the 19th century when other old styles were already being rediscovered by architects, such as Neoclassicism or the Renaissance Revival style. As the name of the style already tells us, the Gothic Revival was heavily inspired by medieval Gothic art and architecture, which was especially popular in Western Europe in between the early 12th century and the rise of Renaissance in the 16th century. Even though Gothic cathedrals are what come to mind when we hear the word Gothic, Secular buildings were also built in the style, such as hospitals, town halls, castles and even in the domestic area. Because of the widespread use of the style throughout Europe, its extended use of over four centuries and the various building tasks that had to be accomplished, Gothic architecture was characterized by a variety of motifs and can be further divided into many different subcategories. Although the Gothic style was largely replaced by Renaissance architecture in the 16th century, it continued to be used sporadically. Its great comeback, however, was due to the Romanticists in the mid-19th century, who again increasingly engaged with the Middle Ages, its art and culture. They also discovered the beauty of the Gothic architecture, some of which have since fallen into disrepair. The ruins of Gothic churches become a popular topic for paintings, as you can see, for example, in David Caspar Friedrich's painting Ruins of Eldena Abbey in the Riesengebirge, which was made around 1830. Soon, architects all over the world also began to discover the Gothic style for themselves and started to recreate it and adapt it to their time. There are many examples and if you find the time or the muse to do so, I strongly encourage you to google some of the buildings. In Europe, you can find the Schwerin Castle, which is located in North Germany, or the famous Tower Bridge in London. You can also find examples of the Gothic Revival style in North and South America, Australia, New Zealand, as well as in Asia. But the Gothic Revival was not only bound to official buildings. Soon the style was also adapted for regular homes. Of course, the decorations and forms used had to be reduced and restricted for this, to ensure a more comfortable lifestyle for the people living in them and to distinguish them from the former buildings such as churches and town halls. A notable expectation from this is the Strawberry Hill House that was built in Twickenham, London and which is actually predating the Gothic Revival movement. In 1747, the English writer and art historian Horace Walpole bought a small 17th century house to establish a country seat for his family. Four times he had the estate rebuilt and extended according to his ideas and designs, until he declared it as finished in 1776, the year that is widely seen as the starting point of the Gothic Revival. The build is characterized by its bright white facade and the use of medieval and Gothic elements such as turrets, battlements and big pointed arc windows with stained glass. This combination lets Strawberry Hill House appear as a mixture between a typical medieval castle and a gothic cathedral. Its unique and eccentric appearance left a big impact on what was regarded as fashionable and allegedly inspired Horace Walpole himself to write The Castle of Otranto, a story that is regarded as the first gothic novel that was ever written. But of course not all homeowners and architects wanted to follow this splendid example. Also, it's important to regard the time in which the style was popular. The 19th century, also called the Victorian era, was a time when many different styles coexisted, displaced each other, but also merged with each other. So when we talk about Victorian houses today, we mean buildings of many different styles, such as Queen Anne style homes, the Second Empire or the Gothic Revival, beside many other styles. It's not always that easy to distinguish them from each other since they draw on similar sources of inspiration and use similar means. So what exactly makes a gothic revival house? Its main characteristics are either pointed windows or clover-shaped windows which look similar to cathedral windows, but of course on a much smaller scale. And like the cathedral windows, they could be decorated with stained glass. But also oriel and bay windows were popular. 
Oriel and bay windows are basically the same. The difference is that a bay window which is located on the first floor is called an Oriel window. In my build I'm using the Strangerville gameplay pack which comes with a set of pointed arc windows and doors with stained glass and fits the gothic revival style perfectly. I also implemented two bay windows, one in the front of the building, the other on the side. The windows which I'm using for the bay windows are also from the Strangerville pack. With their rounded arc and the fancy looking fence in front of them, they remind me more of the more graceful Queen Anne style homes which came later in fashion. But I decided for them anyway because, well, the swatch fitted the rest of the build elements and we know this is rare in The Sims 4 and it still gives a coherent overall picture in my eyes. Another characteristic for the gothic revival homes are very steep gable roofs, which of course are not missing in this build. Often they are decorated with an elaborate verge board trim along the roof edge. I wish so badly for this build element to come at some point to the game, because it would be such a nice little detail and it would make Victorian style homes look so much nicer. On the roofs you can often find dormers, which luckily came with the Stranger Will pack as well. As I restricted myself to not to make the home bigger as 100 tiles, I decided to build a gothic revival cottage. According to this, the outside walls are made out of wood, as this, as this was cheaper than stone and therefore more suitable for a middle class home. I drew further inspiration from what is known as carpenter gothic, a subgenre of the gothic revival found primarily in rural America. Usually houses of this style have an uneven floor plan and a one story porch. So you see, even if 100 tiles are not that much for a family of three, I had to include a porch. Not only does it fit the gothic revival style nicely, it also brings some inviting, homey vibes to it. For the interior of the house I drew inspiration from Victorian era interior designs. The keyword here is more is more. Especially in the less private rooms of the house, such as the living, sitting and dining rooms, people used to display their status with a lot of decorations, opulent furnishing, patterned wallpapers in rich and preferably dark colors, as well as flowers and paintings. A lack of this was also a sign for lacking taste. So you showed what you got. I have tried to emulate this in my home, for this I used the wallpaper from the Paranormal Stuff Pack because it is dark and richly decorated. I followed the darker color scheme for the rest of the living area and mostly used the Paranormal Pack with its beautiful burgundy and deep blue swatches. For today's time, a dark wallpaper may seem a little strange, especially when it's applied to the whole room. But at that time it had a practical purpose. The dark color concealed the soot that settled on the walls due to heating with coal. Accordingly, also in terms of curtains and furniture were dark colors, such as burgundy, dark forest green, navy blue or a deep brown more popular. Later, when more and more electricity entered the houses, this changed and brighter colors up to pastel tones took hold. Since we are on the subject of interiors, it would be fitting to mention that the floor plan as found here in my home would not be found in this manner in the 19th century. The rooms were separated from each other according to their respective purpose and an open floor plan would have been a no-go. Especially the kitchen would have been strictly separated from the rest of the rooms. In addition, the representative rooms would be located in the front part of the house. The bedrooms would then be found in the back or upstairs. The nursery would thus be misplaced in this house. But I found the idea of having a sitting area in the window for the daughter just too cute to resist. While I followed the crowded and dark interior style of the Victorian era in the living area and hallway, I softened the two bedrooms by using lighter colors and reducing furnishing. I just felt that the house would be too gloomy that way otherwise, and even though I built these houses to showcase their respective styles, I also want them to be played with and used by you. The cluttered dark style is simply so antithetical to what we now think of as a comfortable living atmosphere. Of course you can do whatever you want with those houses I built, and if you decide to make the bedrooms look more like the living room, tag me in the pictures of on Instagram, I would love to see your variations. For the master bedroom I used the bed, the bed tables and the closet from Cats and Dogs which came with a beautiful deep reddish brown wood swatch. The mirror came with the get together pack and added with the rest of the furniture to the old look. While the wallpaper from Realm of Magic emphasizes the more rural style of the room. 
As usual, I cluttered up the room a bit to let it look more lived in without overdoing it and added some paintings on the walls. Since the room is meant for two sims, I also kept it more natural. For the kids' bedroom, I used a lot of pinkish colors so that it looks more cheerful. The packs I mostly used for this room were the Parenthood gameplay pack, cats and dogs and some items from the kids' room stuff pack. The bed came with the season expansion pack and it is so adorable. It's one of my favorite single beds in game and I use it for children and teen rooms almost constantly. I also think that maybe at some point of her life the sim who lives here wants to become a musician. So I put some fitting posters on the wall near her bed and I gave her a violin. And as I said before, I put a sofa from Cats and Dogs in the bay window which came in a cute soft pink swatch to it, put some clutter on it and I think this is a really adorable spot in this room. In my mind this room is uh, that of a preteen who slowly finds out who she is and starting developing her own interests. I put some nail polish on her wardrobe but she also enjoys playing with her toys. Fitting to her love for creativity I put an activity table in her room and she is ready to tackle the art prodigy aspiration. For the parents I thought that they are creative people as well so I put a painting easel in the living area for them to use. Also, they like to travel and maybe that's why they preferred staying in a small house. I did cut out the making of the bathroom and hallway in this video because the spaces are really small and therefore are not decorated that much. You can see some pictures of it though at the end of the video. As I said, I kept it simple and focused on functionality more than on the looks. For the hallway I used the wallpaper from the Paranormal Stuff Pack again and did my usual decorating. I put a side table from, from the laundry pack and above uh, it a mirror. Some paintings and plants as well. For the bathroom I used mostly the parenthood pack with its shower bathtub and the sink. I used a mirror from Cats and Dogs with a dark blue swatch fitting the rest of the bath furniture. A bit of decoration and that's it. Coming back to the kids room, uh, I really like how it turned out and while pink is not one of my favorite colors, I like how it looks in here and how well the many different pink swatches work together. With the clutter and activities in here, I think it gives the girl a lot of personality and I'm just overall very happy how it turned out. In my mind, she's a girl who is popular in her friends group, she's outgoing and fun to be around. Maybe when she's older she will like to experiment with fashion and makeup and should she keep her interest in music she maybe one day will become a famous singer or musician. Or if the new gameplay pack The Sims 4 team just announced is really a wedding planner pack maybe this will be her career. In the end it's up to you I guess. Anyway enough of the speculations. If you play the house let me know which career you decided to give her. It was really fun to decorate this room, even though I had some difficulties finding a matching wallpaper for this room. I didn't want to get a pink one because I thought it might be a bit overwhelming, but I finally settled for a pinkish one from the parenthood pack with the little hearts on the trim. And surprisingly for me it pulls the room together nicely. Coming to the landscaping part of the video. I wanted a backyard so badly but I had to scrap this plan because otherwise everything would have looked too cramped. To contrast the darker living area I tried to keep it light, cheerful and a bit romantic. Your sims can grow plants in here and I gave them a little sitting area. For the kid there is also a monkey bar which came with the romantic garden stuff pack. I really love this object but it also kind of confuses me that it was added in the pack which is my which is in my opinion much more focused on dates and older sims, uh, but whatever, I'm not complaining. I did the path leading to the house with the terrain tool. For the fans I used one which came with the stranger will pack and a white swatch. It's really cute and it gives me some lovely suburban vibes. With the terrain tool I outlined where I want the landscaping to be. I used much more plants in the yard than I did in my last videos because it just fits the build better. As I myself am not a big fan of too much clutter as I think it's easier to play in less cluttered plots, I still try to not overdo it. I mostly used the base game plants and put some flowers from the romantic garden in it. 
I'm not sure what they're called in English. Uh, Wikipedia says Mullen. Anyway, I think they look really nice and romantic and they're so cute. As I said before, I put some planters in the garden so your sims can grow their own flowers and vegetables or fruits and put a little sitting area in here. I didn't play test it if a sim can reach the planters behind the table though, but I think I left enough space for them to reach it. The rest of the house is fully usable, except the big bookshelf from Strangerville Pack, because there's a chair in front of it, but I made sure to place some books on the side table in the living room so your sim can relax and level up their skills. Um, so I don't have much to tell you anymore about this build. I hope you enjoyed my video and me talking about Gothic Revival architecture. If so, and you would like to see more, please like and subscribe. This would mean the world to me. And also, if you're interested in my earlier houses for the series Tiny History, you can visit my Instagram, it's linked down below. I already built their tiny versions for Tudor, Cape Cod, Georgian and Greek Revival style homes. If you want a specific architecture style being featured on here, you can put your suggestions in the comments. And if you would like to read more about the Gothic Revival architecture style or the Victorian area interior designs, I link to some articles down below. I wish you all a nice day and hope you will see us next week. Bye bye!